Hi, this is Anna Montejo. I am the publicity chair of Newark Symphony Orchestra and also the principal oboe. And I am here today to interview our special honorable mention winner, Sam Kim. He will be participating in our upcoming February 28th concert. And I would like to introduce you to Sam. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm 15 years old and I'm a sophomore at Conestoga High School. Thank you, Sam. Um, I would like you to talk about uh, the, the piece that you're, you're going to be, um, that you submitted and that will be included with our February 28th concert. So for the competition, I played a piece by Haydn, Concerto in C Major, and I prepared it for about a month before the competition. And, and so can you give us a little background, uh, you starting with the cello, how long you've been playing and, and uh, how you came to choose the cello? So I actually started in kindergarten um, and now I'm in 10th grade, but after a few weeks, I actually dropped it. And then I picked cello back up in third grade. And I first started with cello teacher, Miss um, Jiajin who kind of rose my skills up. And then I moved on to my next teacher who I'm currently studying with, who is Ohad Bar David. Well, uh, since you mentioned the gap, you're gonna have to talk about how you, you put the cello down and then decided to come back. So what happened? So actually I, I kind of lost interest cause it was kind of hard for me to like, like I was also like in kindergarten, I wasn't really the smartest kid, so um, my mom tried to push me to become a bit more studious and I read a lot of books. So I dropped the cello and I started working on my studies a bit more. And it's kind of crazy because like I started studying when I was in kindergarten. It wasn't like really hard studying, but I think um, I just lost a bit of interest in the cello. And then when I saw my brother play, um, I just picked it back up in third grade. And is he older or, or younger? He's older than me by three oh, years. Okay. And so was he, does he play cello as well? Yeah. Uh, does that mean there's more in the family? Is this like a family instrument? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. I was going to assume that maybe because uh, uh, getting on and off the bus, uh, you know, or getting transportation to bring your cello, perhaps you didn't like some of those challenges. Um, but, um, but that's obviously you were destined to come back to it. And, and, um, and so you, you must, uh, I, most likely you had the same size. I don't know if you would have changed size of the cello between uh, starting in kindergarten versus third grade. I think I did change size. I don't remember the exact size, but um, I'm pretty sure I did. I grew like a tiny bit. Yeah. Well, um, so that clearly is how you, you start it. And, and here at, in 10th grade, um, this is your second year at the high school at Conestoga? Yeah. Okay. And, and it's been um, a bit of an odd experience with, with COVID and dealing with the pandemic. And so Sam, can you share with us uh, what it's been like? Um, I'm assuming that you participated at the high school um, playing your cello and and, and also in other ensembles, but may, maybe you can talk about what, it, what, it's, what it's been like, um, you know, with the different ensembles through, through COVID. Yeah, so um, I think I've played the cello a lot more since COVID started. And this was actually my first competition since sixth grade, because I hadn't really been practicing a lot. And um, now I participate in the Delaware County Youth Orchestra and we have orchestra every Tuesday and it's on virtual and it's a bit harder to play in the orchestra, but I think it's a different experience and it's, um, it's a good experience to, to go through. Have they had any opportunities to come together in person to wear a mask? Uh, you're a string player, so you have advantages. Uh, I, I, myself as, as an oboe player, you know, uh, that's a bit harder. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, we haven't met in person yet since the COVID regulations started, and it's all been virtual. 
All right. So what about with your uh, your lessons? Uh, how have you adapted to uh, continue studying with your with your cello teacher? Um, for my lessons, there's still virtual. I think we're going to be starting to move back into um, in person lessons. And I, I actually did do in person lessons for a while and then my teacher actually left to Hawaii because it was just a one-on-one -on -one and um, it wasn't really that dangerous. It wasn't a huge meeting. So we usually did in-person meetings, but now that he's in Hawaii, we did a few virtual meetings and I think we're gonna start moving back into in-person lessons. Or you moved to Hawaii? No. <laughs> is your teacher back? Um, I think he is back. The next meeting should be an in-person meeting. That's good. I'm sure you look forward to that. Mm -hmm. And and so uh, are there other ensembles um, that you've had an opportunity to play in? Yeah, so um, I play my school orchestra. That's kind of difficult because I don't go to school anymore. I don't even do hybrid. I just do all online. Okay. So it's kind of just like, like we play a piece in orchestra and um, you can't really they can't really hear you play because if everybody plays at once, it's just chaos. But um, yeah, I think that's that's a cool experience as well. And I also um, recently made districts for um, my school and I submitted or am in the process of submitting another audition tape to make all states. So I, I know for myself, it, this uh, pandemic has forced me to do more recording as a musician. And is that true for you? Yeah, there's definitely a lot more recording. I didn't really record at all before the pandemic. And now it's just kind of like a regular routine. So how, how do you get, you know, like to me, I'm like, is, you know, is my hair ready? Is, uh, you know, it's like, what, what are some of your, your uh, what's your strategy to, uh, to do these recordings? I don't know. I just kind of, I just kind of play and then just see, I don't, I guess I dress up a bit, but I just kind of, you know, just play like I usually do. And I always feel like there's more that I can improve and it's not just like one recording and then it's finished. I sometimes like think about it for a while and listen to the recordings over and over again. And I still see something that's not perfect and I try again and again, and it's just like a re repeat. Absolutely, uh, that, that's a, another observation is, is, uh, uh, is that listen back and you become uh, more critical, right? And, mm -hmm. and so um, like, how do you, it's, I guess if you have a deadline that helps and then you know you have to just go ahead and submit but otherwise you, how many takes it could go on and on and on <laughs> how did it go putting the audition piece together for uh, the Newark Symphony youth competition so that one was actually um I had an accompanist so it wasn't something I could just do over and over again I had like an hour to do it and um I guess I just so first, it was originally planned that we finish it all in an hour, but then um, it was like two days before the deadline. So I was kind of time cramped. And then I after the hour finished, I wasn't satisfied. Like I went back home and I listened to the recordings and I just thought they were so bad. So after that, we did another hour session and I drove back to where we met, me and my accompanist, and we played for another hour and a half. And then we finally got one that I thought was pretty good. It, like, I still thought there were a lot of mistakes, but I just like, I don't know. It was just so much time. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good story. You know, it, it shows how, how that, that, that critic just stays there. You, you're, you're this musician trying to get the work done, um, but there's, it always feels like one more, just one more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, whatever you did, you did really well. And, and, and so um, for Newark Symphony, this is actually our 43rd year running our youth competition. And the orchestra's been around for 54 seasons. And, and so we don't typically um, 
uh, you're in the high school division and usually there's just one winner selected and and uh, for this particular year there was a really a lot of great competition so i commend you for for uh you know getting the honorable mention and even better to be included you know with our our concert um and and who knows in the future you know maybe at, at in the future years we'll get to have you you can compete again and, and be on our stage and we'll be playing with you so that would be even better um so sam i want to um kind of um put you in the shoes uh get, think back to that elementary and and like if you were to see uh, a, a young kid start with cello what would you tell them how 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 would you encourage them to to continue with the cello? Definitely practice more. Like there's so much practice that I just completely ignored, and I would I think I would be like a really good player, like better than I am now by miles if I just consistently practiced every day. And some days I just didn't feel like it, and I just didn't. So definitely so by the cello. You know, like, what is it that you really like resonate with with that as your instrument? I don't know. I just feel like it has such a beautiful sound and I like like the deepness. It's not it's not as deep as the bass and it's not really as high as the violin. It's just like the middle ground. And I just think I really enjoy the legato on the cello. Nice, nice. Is there is there an example that that maybe you could demonstrate from from the piece yeah so um my piece there's a section where it goes and i think i like that part the most in the whole three pages it's great Thank you. Well, uh, I saw in your bio that you made a reference to visiting Ecuador, and I was wondering if you could share more uh, about your travels and, and how uh, music was a part of that. Yeah, so um, I actually went to Ecuador. That's where my grandpa lives, and it was it was a music trip. It was kind of a music trip. It was kind of a Christian trip because my grandpa's a missionary. But um, we played music in eight different churches in Ecuador. And I thought it was a really cool experience. The kids, they were really nice. There was a lot of language barrier, but I think like I kind of used sign language or gibberish or whatever, and they kind of understood me well. And I think the music, um, I don't know if it moved people, but we play one time we played during a prayer we just played like a a soothing piece during um one of the prayer the quiet times and i think a lot of people just like felt the music and it was really nice yeah i i know um the cello can be so nice in like taze chants i don't know if you're familiar uh with with that style of like meditation in in a spiritual setting uh, so you just made me, made me think of uh, some really special music um, that you, you, you could definitely do in that setting. Um, so in your visit there, um, is there anything outside of, it was there another activity, another, um, you know, outside the music that you got to participate in? Um, well, it was just a lot of... Um... Christian work, I guess. It was a lot of um, things, including religion. And one time we went to a market and we passed out food to people who were just lying on the streets and it was mm -hmm. just a nice experience. That, that sounds very fulfilling. Can you tell me, um, you know, in your own, in your home life, what other interests um, that you enjoy outside of, of uh, music and, and uh, the cello? Something I definitely love doing is soccer. I play soccer a lot and I kind of um, define with soccer, like soccer and cello are like my two major things that kind of back me up and of course I have to study. So it's a lot of time, but I think I enjoy doing both of them. 
That's great. Do you get to play for the school or or travel? Well, I guess maybe not a travel team, but I play for both. I play um, for my school in the fall, and I play travel soccer the rest of the year. That's great. Then you probably have fairly good instincts between what your feet need to do and your hands need to do. <laughs> Put it all together, right? Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. All right. Well, well, Sam, what I was wondering, um, I mean, you're in 10th grade and you're, you're probably considering what's next as far as, you know, college, um, even though you're not quite there yet. Uh, I would like you to dream a little further and, and let's think about where, where Sam would be in 10 years. So I haven't really mapped out what I want to do. I mean, this is called like, dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't really found a major yet in school. Um, I do see myself playing cello a bit. I don't think it's going to be like, like a serious career option. But I, I just think that um, cello will still be a part of my life, maybe like, like amateur cello or just like a useful skill to have. Um, but I, I will just go where life takes me, I guess. I haven't really mapped out or dreamed of anything yet. You sound, Sam, you sound very much in the moment, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good, that's a, that's a good mindset in life, you know, uh, but wh wherever you may arrive in 10 years, I certainly hope the cello is still an active part. And, and um, I mean, for one, no matter where you are living, um, that, you know, music is universal. So, so it'll always be part of your, your resources to be among others and, and have a common language, right? So um, definitely keep playing that cello. Well, um, Sam, I wanna thank you so much um, for, for taking time. Um, is there maybe um, one other little clip you like to play on, on your cello to give us a bit of a sneak peek for what we're gonna hear on February 28th? I haven't really looked at this piece in a while, but sure. <laughs> I'll just play the beginning, I guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for participating. And I want to encourage you to tell your friends, your family to, to please uh, join uh, the concert at three o'clock. It'll be, you know, it's, it's a virtual concert. It is free. And, and so um, I hope all of your fans are, are watching along. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you.